One of my patrons recently asked me, do you think that AI generated music can be dangerous for composers? I mean replace them in some musical styles. And to be honest, I knew that music written by artificial intelligence existed, but I hadn't really listened to any to see how good it was. And when I did listen to it, I was pretty shocked. This music was written by the virtual composer Ava. Ava, which stands for Artificial Intelligence Virtual Artist, learnt how to write music basically the same way that humans learn how to write music, by listening to thousands of existing examples and recognising common techniques, patterns and approaches. The thing that makes this process possible is that most music, particularly within a given style, is pretty formulaic. It follows the same patterns over and over again, does the same things. Especially within a given genre, most songs will stick to the same chords, will stick to the same scales, to the same structures, to the same tempos. At the end of the day, that's why we group these songs together, that's why these songs are part of the same style in the first place. The way that Ava actually learned to compose is by learning to predict how music would develop. It was given a massive library of classical music and listened through it attempting to guess the next note. By practicing this repeatedly it got better and better at predicting what note would come next. So if Ava can work out what note is probably going to come next in a Bach piece that it's never listened to before, it can use that same knowledge, that same ability to predict the unfurling of a melody to create its own melodies, to create a brand new song. Here's a clip from a tutorial on how to use Ava. All the user has to do in this example is choose the tonality, the genre, and the duration of the piece. Uh, and then click create. So let's go ahead and take a listen. So going back to the initial question, should composers be worried about artificial intelligence taking their jobs? Is writing music one day going to be automated? Well, based off the technology that we're seeing here, I would say some music will be automated in the future. But before you scroll down to the comments and leave an anguished comment, there's an important distinction I want to make, because not all music is written equal. The classic composers and songwriters like John Williams, The Beatles, Beethoven, Mozart, Queen, David Bowie, whoever, all of these writers didn't just stick to writing in the existing styles of the time. They innovated, they introduced new elements to the music, introduced new ideas. And this is part of the reason that their music is standing the test of time, part of the reason that their music is so universally adored, because it introduced something new and unique to music. Artificial intelligence like Ava, at present at least, isn't very good at doing this. AI is fantastic at writing music that fits a particular mould, with a particular aesthetic or style in mind. But AI would struggle to break the mould, it would struggle to think outside of the box. AI composers like Ava basically make their music by looking at old music and effectively whittling it down to its bare bones and then reconstructing it into new songs. But at the end of the day, that whole process is limited by what you put in in the first place. So using that process, could AI ever actually create an innovation? Could it ever create something that was actually original? So what I'm saying is I don't think that AI is going to be writing the next great concept album or creating a film score that thematically ties in with the narrative. But what I am saying is that not all music seeks to innovate. Not all music needs to be Beethoven or the Beatles or Bowie. Some music is written explicitly to just sit in the background. Think about radio adverts or the background of a TV scene or a video game. The music in the background is often meant to stay in the background. Otherwise it would get in the way of the action or the dialogue. There's actually a name for this type of music. It's called underscore, music that's meant to serve as a bed underneath the dialogue. So imagine that you're a music supervisor and you've got a scene from a TV show and you need to put some music underneath the dialogue. You could sift through music that you already know and try and clear the rights for that music, or even use some pre-cleared music, but you've still got to find it. 
you could contact a human composer to write something explicitly for it, but the budget might not allow for that. But what if you just load up Ava, type in the basic credentials, the duration, the mood of the song that you need, and it will churn it out in a matter of minutes and you can just plop it into the scene. Ava's creator, Pierre Beru, has big plans for this technology. For example, he wants to create video game music that doesn't just keep looping throughout the game. And he even has an idea to create songs that are personalised to their listeners. One element of AI composed music which is quite intriguing is who owns the copyright to a piece of music written by a computer? Who gets to earn the royalties from its use? Is it public domain or does it belong to the software engineer or does it belong to the user? Well, with Ava at least, the company says in its license agreement that if you pay for the pro plan, the user owns the copyright of the music, so then you can earn the royalties from it. However, if you're using the lower tier version of Ava, then the company retains the copyright. So any music that you've created using the software doesn't actually belong to you. And this struck me as a little bit odd because ultimately this company is dictating copyright law when really that should be left down to lawmakers. You may remember a few years ago there was a news article about a monkey who took a selfie. And this spawned a whole debate about copyright law because generally speaking the copyright of a photo belongs to the person who took it, the photographer. But in this case the photographer wasn't a person, it was a monkey. So if the photographer isn't a human, can they still hold the copyright? Some parties, including Wikimedia, argue that the photo was public domain because a monkey can't hold copyright. But the person who owned the camera and laboriously set up this photo shoot with the monkeys argued that he should be the copyright holder, as he deserves to earn money from the photo. In the end, two separate court rulings confirmed that the photo, and by extension all works created by a non-human, are not copyrightable. So with that in mind, maybe Ava's music isn't actually copyrightable at all. But because the law is so slow to catch up with technology, ultimately it's a Wild West situation and Ava can just enforce whatever copyright rules they want. A different perspective could be that Ava isn't really a composer at all, because ultimately a human still has to press buttons, still has to tell Ava to write the song. So maybe Ava is just a tool, like a piano or a chord book, and therefore the person writing the song with Ava, even though Ava's doing the majority, if not all of the work, the writer is still the person who told Ava to write the song. I think at the moment most people would agree that the music that Ava creates is listenable and nice, but they would still prefer the music of John Williams, for example. It isn't better than John Williams. Ava is good, but not quite as good as a professional composer. But what happens in the future when Ava gets better at composing? What happens in the future when Ava is better than John Williams? Because then we all might be in trouble. Thank you to Melody Composer Squared and all of the other patrons who made this video possible, including the names on screen and Andre Sainziaja, Andrew Brown, Bob McKinstry, Chris Lawrence, Christopher Ryan, Daryl, David Diffendifer, David Efford, David Spaulding, George Taylor, Melody Composed Squared, Nancy Gillard, Patrick Gonzalez, Paul, Peter Dunphy, and Roger Yun.